Are you looking to add some festive peppermint treats to your holiday table? What if you throw in a few chocolate chips? These are my peppermint chocolate chip cupcakes. These are delicious and they're so festive and fun with some optional toppings that really push it over the top. So stick around, I'm gonna show you how to do it coming up next. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds, whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. Now today is one of mine and I came up with this one last year at the request of my friend Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. She had asked if I could come up with a peppermint dessert for her during the holidays and this is what I came up with. So this is going to be my peppermint chocolate chip cupcakes or you could make it as a cake as well. But I am doing it as cupcakes and I already have my cupcake pan lined with paper cups. You don't have to line them, you could just spray it well with baking spray and that would be fine. Okay, future Roy here to advise against using cupcake liners. They are very difficult to try to remove without taking some of the cupcake away. It's like clinging right to the cupcake. So don't do as I do, do as I say. And don't use a cupcake liner, just use some cooking spray. I made a little rhyme. Okay, back to past me. So let's go over the ingredients. Here in this large bowl, I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I have three quarters cup of sugar replacement here. I'm using Swerve, which is a one-to-one -one replacement for sugar. If you're using something that's stronger, you'll have to adjust based on the manufacturer's suggestions of what would equal three quarter cup. I have vanilla extract and peppermint extract and they're still in the bottles because sometimes when I put them in the bowl, if I wait too long, they start to evaporate. I have a half a cup of unsweetened applesauce, half a cup of non-fat Greek yogurt, two eggs, Half a cup or 80 grams of Lily's um, milk chocolate chips. You can use any chips that you want, but this is the one that I use and how I calculated the recipe. I have two teaspoons of baking powder here, one half teaspoon of baking soda, and one quarter teaspoon of salt. So this comes together fairly quickly. We're going to add into the flour the baking powder, baking soda, Get out here. And the salt. And just whisk that together. I used to be a sifter, but it's just so much easier to just put everything in a bowl and whisk it together. And that's it. That just come together. Now in my four cup measure here. You could use a medium bowl if you want. I'm going to add in the eggs so I can break those up first. Just a little bit. Going to add in the Greek yogurt and the applesauce and the one teaspoon of vanilla extract and you're gonna do one teaspoon of the peppermint extract as well. Better put the cover back on that or we know it's gonna just evaporate on me. It doesn't evaporate that quickly, but when I'm setting things up for a video, I can sometimes leave it for a while and come back to almost nothing left in the little bowl. So I'm just going to whisk all of these 
wet ingredients together. And once it comes together pretty much, I'm going to put in the sugar replacement and mix that in. And as I've said in previous videos, sometimes the sugar is considered a wet ingredient, sometimes it goes in with the dry. I like generally putting it in with the wet because I feel it dissolves better before you add it in with the flour. But you could honestly do it either way. Okay, so that's done. Let me just clean up a few things and we will move on. Okay, from here, you're just going to add in the wet ingredients to the dry. And I can definitely smell that peppermint. So that goes in and we're gonna use a rubber spatula to bring this together because you don't wanna over mix it. As I've said previously, if you over mix a cake batter or a muffin or anything like that, it will get tough, more like a bread. Now this batter will be thick, just so you know. Don't think you've done something wrong because it's so thick. I mean, that's thick. So once it comes together, it just took a moment. Gonna add in our chips and just fold those in there. And that is it. Now there will be a glaze later and some optional toppings, but we'll talk about that once these come out and have cooled. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my scoop here and just scoop into each of these cupcake liners. Okay, so they are all filled and I just wanna wipe off any batter that got onto the cupcake pan just so that doesn't burn while it's in the oven. All right, so the cupcakes are all in. Just so you know, I used a number 16 scoop, which is about four tablespoons, a quarter cup. So each of these takes about a quarter cup of batter. So now these are going to go into a 350 degree oven for about 15 to 18 minutes until a toothpick in the center comes out clean. Now, if you wanted to do it in a nine by 13 pan, you would bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes. And if you wanted to do it as eight or nine inch, probably 25, 20, 25 minutes. But on the recipe, I only list the cupcakes and the nine by 13. So these are gonna go in to the oven and I will be back when they come out. Okay, there we have them. The peppermint chocolate chip cupcakes. I can definitely smell both the peppermint and the chocolate. So now what we need to do is let them cool in the pan for just 10 minutes. As I've mentioned before, you wanna let a cake or cupcake or muffin cool a little bit in the pan because it's still very tender and fragile. Then we will remove them from the pan and put them directly on the cooling rack and let them cool completely. Now, one other thing I did want to mention when you're doing cupcakes and you test the cupcakes for doneness, test the two in the middle. The ones on the outer edge are gonna get more heat sooner. So it's more likely that those will be closer to done than the two in the middle. So I always test on the two in the middle just because I know if they're done, the others are done. But we're gonna let them cool in the pan 10 minutes. I'm gonna take them out, put them on the cooling rack and let them cool completely. Then I'll be back and we will put a glaze on them and maybe a few little toppings. See you then. Okay, so it has been probably about an hour. The cupcakes are pretty well cooled and they will cool a lot quicker than if you did it in a nine by 13 pan where you might have to wait an hour and a half to two hours. But now we are going to work on the peppermint glaze to go on top of these. So I have one half cup of confectioner sugar replacement. I'm using Swerve. 
I have four tablespoons. The recipe calls for three, but I just wanted to make sure I had a little extra of almond milk. And we're gonna maybe not even need half of it, but we will see as we go along. We have a little more vanilla extract and peppermint extract. We're gonna do an eighth of a teaspoon of each of those. First thing we're gonna add in is the extracts because they are liquid and they are going to be part of what turns this into a glaze. So we wanna add these first so that way we don't add them after the almond milk and then have it a little too loose. Although if that happens, you just add a little more confectioner sugar and you'll be fine. Now the one thing, um, like a lot of people have an issue with artificial sweeteners with that cooling effect, that actually won't be a problem here because you're gonna expect some of that from the peppermint. So people who have that issue may not have an issue with this. Of course, you could always use regular confectioner sugar and just adjust for the bites, points, calories, etc. So I'm gonna start off with just two tablespoons of the almond milk and add that into the confectioner sugar. That was a little short on the second one. And then we're just gonna mix this together. Okay, I think that's all we're gonna need is just the two. I thought that was the case, but you can never tell. It depends on humidity and things like that. But you can see it is a bit runny. And that's kind of what you want. This is just a glaze. So there are two ways you can do this. You can take a little of the glaze, put it on top, and just run it around with your spoon to glaze it. And this is probably what you'd have to do if you did it as a cake, although you could pour it on. Or you can take your cupcake and dip it right in, let the excess fall off. That's a much quicker method. So let me dip the cupcakes in the glaze and I'll show you the optional toppings to go along with it. All right, so we have all of the cupcakes glazed. All I did was dip them in. When you get towards the bottom, it's a little harder to glaze them. So you may need the spoon just to finish them off. That is an option, but they're all glazed. Now I'll show you a couple of optional toppings. One is simply some sugar-free Hershey's syrup or ch chocolate syrup that you just drizzle over the top. And I will be doing that, but not before I take some sugar-free peppermint candies and crush them up. I'm gonna take 12 and just smash them up so that they become little fragments that I can sprinkle on top of the cupcake. You may not need all 12, but I just tend to err on the side of caution, make sure I have more than I need rather than run out. So I did forget my little sandwich bag to crush those in. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my mints in a bag. Now I had a little difficulty finding these, even though this is the time of year where you'd expect to find them. No supermarkets that I went to carried them, but usually you can find them in drugstores. Like I got these at CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens, those kinds of places typically will have these. Just I think probably because diabetics go in there. I don't know, but I'm putting them in a sandwich bag but I'm not gonna close it completely. I'm gonna leave a tiny little opening here only because if I made it completely sealed, all that air might become like a balloon and pop when I start smashing. So I'm gonna smash these up off camera so you don't have to hear the banging and I'll be right back. Okay. So I have my mints crushed up. Now I chose 12 because if you have one, it's gonna be zero bites or points. And so I just figured one for each cupcake. 
like I said, you may not need all of that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it out on the cutting board and find any that are too big and crush those up a little bit more. And then I'm going to dip the cupcake so that it catches onto the icing, the glaze. Now you could sprinkle it over the top if you'd like, but I kind of like the little shards scattered around. And I often have trouble, especially with my shaky hands, trying to get things evenly distributed that way. So you want some of the little bits, some of the little chunks, and then if you need to, just smooth some out, move them around. Let me finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, so there are our cupcakes so far with the optional crushed peppermints on top. Now that's not gonna add any bites or points because like I said, one single candy would be zero. And I didn't use all of the candy that I put on here. So that would be zero. Now I'm gonna take a little drizzle of the um, sugar-free syrup. I've heard some people aren't fans of this one, but they do have a zero sugar that I have, but I haven't tried yet. It's supposed to be better than this one, but I still have this one open, so I don't wanna open another one. So I'm just gonna use this one and just do a little drizzle. Now, you could do two tablespoons of this for zero. So a little drizzle, again, is not gonna add anything. Now I put them all onto a cutting board so that they're close together. And then I can just do a little swipe across, like so. And this will just enhance that chocolate chip in the cupcake. So there you have it. I'm going to move them to a decorative platter so they look a little better than on this messy cutting board. I'll be right back with the nutrition facts. Okay, so there you have it. The peppermint chocolate chip cupcakes with optional toppings. You don't have to do the toppings and it's still good. This just bumps it up a little bit without adding any bites or points. Of course, it will add some calories or macros. Now, with or without the optional toppings, these are two bites for one cupcake. Now, I did the calories and macros for no toppings because they're optional. I didn't want to put them on. So the calories for one of these would be 107. The fat would be 2.9 grams. The carbs would be 32.6 grams and the protein would be 4.1 grams for one of these cupcakes or for 1 12th if you baked it as a cake. So this would definitely be a festive little addition to your holiday table. So I hope that you will give these a try. And if you liked this recipe, please give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you are looking for recipes that can help you on a weight loss journey. And share this video if you know of anyone who's out there on a weight loss journey who might appreciate something like this. Also hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video. And comment down below if this is your type of treat, if you would do the toppings, what you think of the chocolate syrup, the sugar-free versus the zero sugar. I'd be curious if anyone's tried them both. I have heard the zero sugar is the better option, but I don't know yet. And you can also find the recipe on my blog, and that is linked down below in the description box as well as other channels that I watch, other information that you might need or appreciate, including links to my social media. Here is my Instagram handle, and there are two Facebook groups I am part of. One is mine, Recipes with Roy, and the other one is Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H, and that one I co-admin with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel, as well as Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. And Brie is the one we have to thank for these delicious cupcakes. If she hadn't challenged me last year, I may not have this recipe. 
So thank you, Bree. And I think it's time for us to go and have a festive little treat. So until next time, bye.